Okay, well, in the short month that I've been here in Taipei, um, people have told me that people in Taipei are kind of risk averse. So I'm here to talk about, uh, well, the way to start a, a successful business, take the risk. And, uh, well, sadly, I'm not rich and famous yet, so I'm going to be telling stories from uh, one of the people that um, are my role models, uh, Richard Branson. You guys know who this is, right? Uh, right? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so he started companies like Virgin Airlines and um, um, Virgin Music, so, and he's, he's a billionaire right now, so his stories should have some credibility. All right, so he's known for his crazy publicity stunts, and um, well, he wouldn't be afraid of dressing up like a girl just to get some publicity, uh, which makes him one of the most recognizable figures uh, in this world as well. Uh, we Asians are kind of shy and very uh, right? right? So, uh, but Branson isn't afraid afraid to uh, be the butt of jokes, and that makes him kind of stand out. Uh, but where, where did it all start? Branson started on his journey at the age of nine, where he started planting Chris Christmas trees in the backyard of his house. Uh, and his goal for that was when he was 18, he could actually retire in Bali, afford a retirement in Bali, basically. It failed, of course, but he bounced straight back up and uh, started a student magazine called Students which made him kind of successful enough to quit school and um, at the age of 15, despite having a dyslexia. You, you guys know what that is, right? Uh, this, this is one of those incidents that showcases Branson's grit and determination to succeed. And despite having faced failure, he got back up on its feet and um, tried again, despite what other people had to say about it. Uh, this is something that we all should keep in mind and it's a really valuable lesson to learn. Um, in his own words, as long as you've tried everything you can, if you fail, you sleep okay. And when things get better, you learn from your mistakes and start over again. However, if you give up too readily, you'll forever hit, hate yourself. So uh, as students became popular, a young singer named Michael O'Phil sent, sent him a, a tape, a, a recording to Branson. So Branson loved it. He then went out uh, to the record labels to help, to help him promote the tapes, but none of them kind of responded. So he, he went like, uh, because he loved uh, Michael's music so much, he went, screw it, let's do it. He started his own record label. These five words were, resulted in the beginnings of Virgin Music, which turned out to be the fourth biggest label in, in the world. He wasn't interested in being in business, but he loved creating things. So for a long time, he didn't even know, oh shit, I'm slow, all right? Okay, well, uh, well, the music label business is really, really hard. And well, he built a successful label, but he was still hungry for more. He saw a gap in the market because he was super unhappy about flying. So he thought, screw it, let's do it again. And he started Virgin Airlines. Uh, are there any investors in the room? If you hear that, this will be the look in your face. Yeah, all his investors thought he was crazy, out of his mind. But Branson had so much faith in the opportunity that he decided to do it anyway. However, not without deeply considering the risks involved, um, and he protected the downside. He simply negotiated a deal with Boeing to be able to return the plane at the end of 12 months. Right? So, uh, it, so if people didn't like the airline that he built, uh, he covered his ass, basically. This dramatically reduced the risk and ensured that Virgin Music could actually continue running even if the airline failed. Uh, in the end, Virgin Atlantic went on to become the eighth largest UK airline, and this from, being, from him being pissed off at uh, shitty services of airlines at that point of time. And now he's taking up, it up a crazy notch by dabbling in space exploration. Well, he also appreciated his staff really, really a lot, basically. Well, he, he used to get drunk with his staff and treated them as friends, and this kept them motivated. He realized that in, in, in the airline business, an aircraft is only an aircraft, and it's the same aircraft used by all the other airlines, but what really differentiates it, it's the people that run, that, that run the show. So they are the ones that make a company either exceptional or average. So, right, so and lastly, if you become a, ever become a billionaire from listening to this talk, remember to give back to charity. Nothing feels better than actually helping others who are in need. So uh, that's all. Uh, thank you.